What up my nerds? It is Jason here from Custom Cans and I don't know if you remember but before Christmas I was taking a look at the new Bear Dynamic Pro X range and their new Stellar driver to see if there was any more goodness to be squeezed out of that. I had to listen to all of them and like the 900 Pro X is pretty good. Sounds pretty good. The DT770 Pro X, again if you like the DT770 it's just a better version of that. But the 700 was a little bit wonky. There's not, this was, wasn't as good as the others in the range. So that's what I've been focusing on as I think there's more to give from that, whereas the others will just be kind of subtle, subtle tweaks. Now then, if we have a quick look at the graph, as you can see down in the base, you've got quite a nice base shelf, and then you've got a, a bit of a dip there, which is probably a bit too much of a dip at around 300 hertz. But the kind of elephant in the room is probably at about 4k you've got nothing it just drops to the floor and then comes back up again yeah i'm sure when bed and i were making these you know the the 900 as i said sounds really good and making a close back is a little bit harder but e even then i'm sure they put it on the test rig and they were like hans why, why is there <laughs> a whole lump missing out of our frequency plot there is nothing to worry about fritz it is a very narrow hole so very deep but very narrow the, the sounds cannot even fall in such a small hole. And look, it is a beautiful headphone and it has fantastic space. Uh, no, no one will notice, but um, but people did notice. Uh, I'm not saying you're gonna you're not I'm not saying you're gonna necessarily hear it, but it definitely is like just under 4K. It produces no sound at all, which is very strange. And I suspected when I was first looking at it, it's some kind of cancellation because the frequency that it's missing is roughly the same as the wavelength that would be trapped within the ear cup and I thought easy money I just like put some stuff around the edge it absorbs those reflections stops the cancellation happy days but obviously if it was that easy biodynamic would have done it already so anyway yeah there was it was a little bit some of the mods that, that, that I've done to it were a little bit counterintuitive which is why maybe biodynamic didn't manage to fill in that gap in the factory but as you can see there's a lot of Many, many prototypes and bits and bobs and lots of messing around with plasticine and snippety foam to try and figure out what it was. Yeah, so building up areas with the plasticine, finding out what features did what things and then making more problems and then fixing those problems with other things. So yeah, it's taken it's taken me a good you know, little while to come up with a kit, but now we've uh, kind of done this. So we filled in that gap at 4K and then we've got a few different tuning options. So we've got one that's pretty flat where we've taken out most of the lumps and dips, one where we've left in the, the base and reduced the dip at two to 300 Hertz and another one where you get stinky dirty base. So you've got three tuning options. So I'm gonna go through how you would fit it, what some of the bits and bobs do. So if you've got a pair of these DT700, you fancy retuning them a little bit, We'll go through some stuff. Allow me to interrupt you for a moment. Please, please subscribe. I'm trying to, trying to increase the number of subscribers, which really helps the channel, helps us get, get stuff out. So yeah, if, if we've popped up a couple of times in your feed and you like what you see, hit subscribe. You know, we're going to be doing more stuff. We're always doing more stuff. And the more subscribers we get, the more money we get, the more toys we get, the more good stuff we can do. Anyway, uh, yeah, and obviously, uh, if you could leave a comment, even if it's slightly sarcastic, uh, it cheers me up. I try and reply to everyone, especially the stupid comments. You know, it's, it's fun. Some bants. Let's have some bants in the comments. But yeah, it's really weird. Like every time I release, it's not really weird, but every time I release one of these videos where I've designed a kit to mod some headphones and retune them slightly, I'll get someone in the comments that says, why don't you just EQ it? And that is a perfectly valid question. And like, most headphones it's fine you know you can use eq the advantage of modding so i enjoy modding stuff that's why i do it um but also like i can plug these into anything uh, analog sources anything it'll always sound the way i've retuned it i don't have to have an eq in every device that i'm plugging it into um but eqing is fine for most things but this i believe uh may not have been fixable with eq because if we look at the phase graph here, you'll see that where you've got your big dip at about 4K, the phase graph running around the bottom, you see it gets all the way to 180 degrees and then wraps around and comes back to the top, meaning that at that point, those frequencies are out of phase. There's, there's some cancellation going on. So increasing the volume there, you can also increase the cancellation. It's not gonna, it's not gonna affect things. You're just gonna end up with distortion and stuff. 
uh, at that at that frequency. So I think that this might be one of the rare examples where if someone in, puts in the comments, why not just put a, use EQ? I can actually say, oh, well, I think in this particular case, I don't think EQ would have fully fixed it. And if we take a look at the two phase graphs side by side, the top left one is the stock one, the bottom right one is the modified one. And I put a black line in so you can see where zero phase is. So if it's on that line, it's all perfectly in phase. And then as you can see on the stock one, when we get up to 4K, it drops down till it's 180 degrees out of phase, and then it has to wrap around and come back and it comes back in phase, which I think is causing that constant, you know, it, looking at the graph, that seems to be the culprit for the cancellation there, which is why you're getting no sound at all at 4K, because you've basically got it out of phase cancelling. And then you can see on the modified version, we've managed to stop that cancellation. We found out what was causing it, fixed it. So I think that is better. You know, you've still got a bit of a dip there, which I think is just a feature of this driver, but you, you at least you've got, you haven't got cancellation there. So you've got, you've got some frequency, <laughs> you've got some sound there, whereas before you had basically no sound. But obviously if you're an EQist and you believe devoutly in EQ, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's great, it's cheap, it's easy. There's no chance of breaking your headphones. If we mod them, there's always a chance of breaking them. It's just me, I, I like to mod stuff. And there's definitely some things I think you can do physically that maybe you couldn't do with EQ. But I also quite fancy having some fun in the comments. So please, uh, if you do EQ, please write down below, why don't you just EQ your headphones? And I'll try and write a different answer to uh, every time I'm asked it. We'll get, we'll, so, you know, if I get 20 people asked, we're gonna get real creative with some of the answers down there. And uh, I, I will try not to be insulting. Uh, we'll have some fun. So anyway, uh, let's, let's get into these, let's fit this mod and I'll go through some of the things I found while I was modding it. A lot of the, a lot of the prototypes were just getting it to fit properly. Uh, I did use plasticine quite a lot during the mod to try and actually figure out the shape of stuff just because 3D printing, you know, it might take 20 minutes to print one of these, whereas I can squish a bit of plasticine in a couple of minutes and stick it back in. So if you're modding, if you're thinking of 3D printing stuff, plasticine is still a very valid method for dicking around with stuff. So anyway, let's get into these. So what I would use is some kind of pry tool or a small screwdriver. We'll stick it in the edge here of the retaining ring and you know, find the gap, lever it up. That'll go pop and come out. Sorry, I didn't show the pads, but yeah, you just pull the pads off. Then we'll remove this little disc here and that removes a lot of the higher frequencies. So if you want that Bayer peak back, then you could replace this with one from a DT770, which are a couple of quid, and that'll give you more of that 4K peak that uh, Bayer Dynamics traditionally have. Now then these drives are socketed, which is brilliant, and it has made this whole modding process a pleasure. Uh, when I was doing the XS and I had to dismantle those 50 times, it took forever. So these ones you just tap, 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 tap and the driver will come out because it is socketed in there. Right, so your driver's out. Here is your driver, and we're gonna remove this central part here. It's clipped in with three clips. If you look at it, you'll notice that one clip is closer to the circuit board than the other, and this side we're gonna attack. Now then, avoid this whole circuit board. Don't mess with that, because if you dislodge that in some way, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. But essentially, we're gonna put a tool down the side here and just lever that up so that that comes off the clip there. And the back here, you can also pop something in there. Just lift that up and then this will come off. Again, I've had to do this quite a lot of times, so I've got the hang of it, but just go carefully. Don't accidentally rip off this circuit board. Okay, so that's off there. And then in your kit, you'll get one of these little orange discs, uh, which will allow just the right amount of air through. We're gonna put that over the back of the magnet centrally and then take this bit and then clip that in place just where the other one was so just, just get it into place make sure everything's clipped in so that's all that's all in there that's that done that's pretty straightforward inside there are three little stays at the bottom here you're going to take this disc of foam pop that just in the middle there just Get that kind of central in there. And then these little jobbies are what we're gonna be using for tuning. And uh, they will come with one with a two mil hole in it and one with a three mil hole in it. Now then if you don't put these in, you're gonna get dirty, dirty bass. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit boomy, but if you like loads of bass, then this could be the, the thing for you. 
but uh, I think the three mil hole one is the best. It's not the flattest. Like if you're using it for studio stuff, you probably want the two mil hole, which gives you a nice flat response. But uh, the the three mil one, it'll keep that bass hump, so you still get a nice bass if you like lots of bass. So to fit this thingy, if you look on the side of the headphone, there's going to be a little port, um, little bass port there, and on the inside of that, there's a gap in the plastic, and this will fit into there. You need to put the bottom bit in first at a at an angle and then push in the then push it back towards the thing so pushing it pushing the top in and it will kind of just fit into that yeah. it's a it's deliberately a tight fit so it won't come out but yeah you want to push it into that hole that's in there and there is another hole the other side which is blanked off and what I would do is I'll take your other one so say you've got your three mil one in there I'll get the two mil one I'll put it in the other side so then you won't lose it if you want if you want to change in the future uh, it'll stop you from losing that. That's in there. Right, and then you should be able to put your driver back in. And then reassemble your sandwich. So put your thing on, then the then the retaining plate. This has got a little key at the bottom there, and there's a keyway there. Make sure they line up, because they'll only it'll only go in one way around nicely. Click that all in. If your pad again that's got a little key here there's a little matching hole there make sure they're lined up and that's it really you know it's a quick 10 minute thing and it will retune it making it a bit flatter so there you go it's pretty quick and straightforward you know it takes 10 minutes to change this thing obviously it's all reversible you can click all this stuff take all this stuff out click the original thing back in you haven't broken anything uh, it'll go in and out be very careful you know I can't be held responsible if you break your headphones but I'm pretty certain if you take your time it's pretty pretty easy I think most people could do it or if you're a little bit ham-fisted and tend to break you know you'll know if you're clumsy if you break a lot of things get your friend to do it who's got the hands of a surgeon uh, it's pretty easy to do and it will allow you to retune these now obviously if you love the sound of these as they are don't do it but if you think ah oh, maybe the bass is a little bit muddy you know blah 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 should we do a little should we do a little sound test where we listen to the difference between the two of them <laughs> As you can hear, it's, 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 it's with the three mil one. It's relatively subtle. It's just taking out some of the some of the minor issues on the frequency plot. Two mil one is more noticeable. It's a flatter response, but obviously you lose lose a lot of that bass because because you've flattened it off. And a lot of people prefer a little hump in the bass. But yeah, if you were using these for producing music, you might want to go for the two mil flat response kind of thing. But yeah, I hope that was interesting. It was much harder than I imagined it would be to uh, <laughs> to do it, and all of these bits are important. If you if you're wondering what what these various bits do, so these little these little doohickeys uh, just reduce the size of the bass port on the side because after I'd done the other mods, the bass was the bass level was too high, so I put these in to reduce it, and I'm very proud of these because they fit the. They fit really nicely. It's quite an elegant solution, I find. I think this little bit here that goes in between the stays that reduced. Uh, once I designed this, there was a little dip about 6k, and popping this in behind there stopped that. So that's what that bit did. Uh, this orange doohickey just goes in here so that. Uh, this can't get pressed too close to the magnet. It gives it a little bit of breathing room just so it can breathe through the back of the magnet. But the dip at uh, 4K, where we were getting that phase reversal, 
that was due to the sound coming out of the back of the magnet. If, if I found that pretty early on when I was just messing around with the plasticine, that if I blocked that hole on the back, suddenly that dip started to disappear. So uh, yeah, it's basically sound coming out the back of the magnet and then interfering in some way with other stuff bouncing off. So you're getting some kind of weird cancellation there. And yeah, so putting a, a cover over the magnet, but still letting it breathe a little bit was the main thing. And then I've just kind of smoothed off a few bits to smooth out some, some airflow here and there. Yeah, all of these things were needed to get it all to line up because as a, yeah, when I covered up the back of the magnet, it caused other problems here and there and there. So yeah, it's all, it all works together to fix this problem but uh yeah i got there in the end it took me took me a good few days of prototyping and testing to get to to figure it out and a couple more days just to finesse everything and get it to fit really nicely but yeah it was very it was very interesting i, I you know i when i saw that big hole at 4k i did think it's got to be some kind of cancellation there's got to be yeah it's got to be some kind of wave bouncing off coming back cancelling out and that is that is what it turned out to be and luckily I found a way to fix it that wasn't too invasive or difficult or anything like that. So yeah, I, just, I hope it's interesting and I very much look forward to the comments down below. Please leave a comment. And, um, and obviously if you're interested in headphones and how they work and how they're tuned to sound slightly different, I'd probably uh, hit subscribe because I'm often doing this kind of thing and stuff. <laughs>